Hey guys, what's up everybody? Uh, what I want to do today is really just discuss why I decided to turn directions and basically build my entire business online. Um, over the past 20 years, I've actually been working in direct sales, uh, which basically meant I had to learn a couple skills to get in front of people, to actually present information to them, to sign them up, to then get back with them, to sign them up again, and kind of keep the process going to actually get them in a position where they understood what they were doing to learn these same skills to be able to build. And there was just a couple things that we really teach. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff to learn, um, but doing it face to face, doing it from city to city, um, took a lot of time. You know, we used to joke with people and say, if you're not putting 50,000 miles a year on your car, you're really not building your business. If you're not changing your tires and your brakes two to three times a year, you're really not building your business. You know, if you haven't visited every single Starbucks, Denny's, late night place, then you're really not building your business. And what we're finding is, is although that does work, um, not as many people like it. Um, also, there's a faster way to do it. Um, through social media, through online marketing, you have the ability to do the exact same thing. And what, what I want to do is just kind of discuss the skills. What are the things that you have to know how to do? And then how do you transfer them online and why is online better? Um, and there's just a couple things. Number one uh, thing you have to do is basically create people, which is nothing more than contacting people. And what I found is, is most people, the contacting is not a normal skill, you know, uh, typically we have our friends through the people we work with or we're introduced, but most people don't go out of their way to find new people unless you happen to be a real estate agent, an insurance person, somebody who sells and market stuff. Um, we're not really, you know, going door to door in direct sales, although that was very common years and years and years ago. But if you go door to door now, wear a bulletproof vest and you know have some anti-dog spray and all that because most of the time it's actually illegal in certain places to do that so it just doesn't even happen anymore um, but number one you have to learn how to contact people you have to learn how to you know meet greet bond introduce yourself um, ask some questions build enough rapport to actually exchange information um, what i find is is until you can get to a point where you can exchange information um, you really haven't made a contact with somebody although you might know their name you might know you might know where they work, but you're, you're not only supposed to make a contact, but you really want to make a connection. Um, and connection is kind of more important, so that way you have a way to get back with them. Number two is you have to learn how to invite. Um, the invite is nothing more than inviting them to actually see a presentation or inviting them to look at what you do. Um, the old school was, hey, either I'll come over to your house, you come over to my house, we'll meet at a third party place, um, you come to the event that most companies have. Um, invite, or it's really setting an appointment. By setting an appointment, you have the ability to then show up, but the problem is, is you know, this takes both people, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. it takes both people to actually show up, and you know, things happen, you know, people have their tires blow out, people are in accidents, there's you know weather situations, there's kid situations, there's dog situations, there's house situations, there's job situations, there's so much stuff that goes on. A lot of people, you know, you can set the appointment all day, but then it's like how many people actually show up to the appointment is the second problem. You know, some people change their minds, some people forget, um, some people don't write it down, some people do. Um, but then you get to the third step. The third step then is to actually, you know, STP is what I was taught a long time ago, show the plan or show the program or share the product. There's all kinds of different ways to say it. But really, this is the presentation. Present. You have to present the opportunity. Now, whether you're presenting the opportunity or you're bringing a laptop or DVD, which, unfortunately, I think is fucking stupid. Um, now, let me tell you why I think it's stupid. If you're so stupid that you don't know how to present the opportunity that you're in, people probably aren't going to want to join you. Sorry, um, you know, I, if you haven't noticed already, I'm probably going to be pretty blunt on this, uh, just so I can describe to you exactly what it takes to build this, because, you know, I don't want to bullshit around with you. I want to tell you what it really, really takes. Um, if you can't present your opportunity, 
people aren't going to want to join you. So you do need to learn what you're doing. Now, in the beginning, you might say, hey, I'm brand new. That's going to work maybe for the first week, two weeks. But, you know, if you're six, eight, 12 months in going, I'm stupid and I still don't know the presentation, and you told that to a professional, that's why professional people aren't joining you. Professional people don't like to join people who don't know what's going on. Now, you also have the duplication factor. I understand that. But if your company doesn't know how to teach people how to present what you're doing, um, that's a problem. Um, I'm just, you know, speaking from you know experience. The biggest companies in the world teach their people how to present. The biggest companies, the the companies that have lasted the longest, teach their people how to present. And you're actually joining a person. You're not joining a DVD. Um, the other problem with the presentation being, you know, something other than somebody sitting flipping through something. Um, what happens when that device runs out of batteries? And I'll just give you an example. Um, and I can't remember if it was Atlanta or Texas. It was either Atlanta or Texas. 45 people show up. There's 10 people in the room. There's guests in the room uh, to this company. And the, the DVD player like wouldn't play. It just didn't work. Nobody in the room knew how to present. Nobody. So guess what they did? They sent everybody home. Fucking stupid. Learn how to present. Don't get caught in that situation. So present. Learn the presentation. Um, here's my rule of thumb. If you're presenting for more than 30 minutes, you screwed up. You screwed up. I mean, yes, 15 minutes to open, 30 minutes to present, 15 minutes. You need to get out of there. An hour max. If you're there for four hours, that's not going to work. Um, you know, not to mention it's hard enough to get in front of somebody to begin with. Number four is the follow through. Um, the follow through can be a lot of different things. It can be a thir third party um, call. It can be a website to go look at. Basically, it's anything other than you kind of just confirming what they already saw, validating that it's real um, and answering questions. Number five is the event. You want to get them to some kind of live event. And here's what they found is if you can go from here to here, you actually will close 80% of the people if you can get them through each individual step. Now, what most people do is they try to skip from contacting somebody all the way down to just getting them to the event, which you might have a 20% close. And you'll have people go, well, I brought somebody every week for the last four weeks and nobody's gotten in. That's because you skipped the fucking steps. You know, if you don't, you know, contact to invite to actually show them what you do and you're just bringing them blindly to a meeting, which most people don't like to do anyway, then they're coming for information to find out what the hell this is. They're not actually coming to confirm what they already saw. But if you show it to them and they like what they see and then they see something else and then they come to the event, what happens is you'll sign up about 80% of them. So that's kind of what I did and I just mastered each one of these steps. I have a special contact that basically has about a 100% ratio of being able to get people's information. Whether that's a new person, an old person, a contact, I mean it could be a cold contact or a warm contact. For those of you who don't know what that means, because um, some people are new, that's okay. Um, when I was new, I didn't know what that meant. Warm contact, is that the alive people and the dead people? That's another way to say it, but um, warm contact is somebody you know, somebody who knows you. you, they know your name, they probably know what you do, they, they've seen you a bunch of times, that's a warm contact. You know, your parents, um, your brother, sister, those are probably warm contacts unless they're, you know, no longer around. Um, then you have cold contacts, which are people you don't know. I've never seen you before, you drove up in a car, you got out, you're in Starbucks line, I don't know who you are, and you know you look sharp and I want to talk to you. That's a cold contact. I found a way, 100% of the time, to get their information. That's for another video. Um, the invite. Inviting is a skill. I had to learn this. I actually learned that skill in particular in real estate. Um, and it's something called the choices close. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's the easiest thing in the world to teach. Once you teach this and you master this, you can set up appointments like crazy. And here's the thing, it works online and it works offline, but it's the same exact skill. Then the presentation, the presentation took a little while, but eventually I worked with some people who really, really were good at the presentation. They told me, here's how to start it. 
Here's the three things that you're trying to convey. For those of you who don't know, there's three things that you have to convey in a presentation to be able to get people to want to do whatever you're doing. Three things. And if you skip any one of them, they are not going to want to do it and they're not going to want to close. So it would be really important to find out what those three things are. If you don't know what those three things are, I'll have another video just to describe those three things very slowly, very methodically, so you can actually bring people to a confirmation on each one of those three things. Because if they confirm themselves on each one of those three things, they get it, they understand it, they want to do it, you're going to sign them up. Um, and move them on to the next step, which is the follow through to get them third party to get them to the event to get them in your company business, you know, uh, affiliate, whatever you want to call it. The follow through um, is pretty simple. I found a way to do this not only through third party, through calls, I found a way to do it through a website, I found a way to do it through a CD, I found a way to do it through a YouTube. It, it's basically all the same thing, but there's certain language you need to use to get the majority of people. You're not gonna get everybody, but to get the majority, to get to the 80%. You know, you're gonna lose 20% of the people, and here's what I was told, 27% of the people aren't gonna to wanna to do anything anyway. I mean, 27% of the people could win the lottery, and they're gonna be pissed because it wasn't the numbers that they really wanted, or, you know, they're gonna be, I mean, one guy was upset because he had to pay so much in taxes. You know, he wins 10 million, he gets to keep about half of it, and he's pissed because he had plans for the other five, you know, I don't know what's wrong with people, but there's always those, those people. Um, those people, you know what I'm talking about? Um, events. Bringing people to the event and knowing what to do at the event. As stupid as it is, I've watched people do each one of these steps and come to the event and screw up here. Why did they screw up there? Um, you can say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, and just kind of, I mean, I, I need to do a video on it really because there's, there's a long list of stuff not to do and there's a list of stuff to do. If you do any of the stuff you're not supposed to do, you're probably not going to get them in. If you don't do some of the important steps that you're supposed to do, you're probably not going to get them in. But look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six steps. Because the sixth step is closing. It's just asking the right question. The right question. Now, you have to ask the right question at the right time. What most people do is they find out what this is, you know, this question to ask, and they're asking this question at the contact trying to get them in before they know what's going on, and which that would never work, but um, that's what people do, and they spend a lot of time right here trying to figure this one out, and they talk to three or four people, and it doesn't work, and then they get out. Now, why did I decide to go online is the question. Um, this takes time. This takes effort. This takes headaches. This takes a lot of work. Um, it's worth it. It pays really well, but here's the problem. Now that we're online, contacting people is a numbers game. Inviting people is a numbers game. Presenting is a numbers game. Follow-up is a numbers game. Getting people to an event is a numbers game. Closing people is a numbers game. So being that it's all numbers, what you're always looking to do is how to do the basics, but how to speed them up. Well, one way to speed them up is watch this, contacting people. What if you could go online and instead of contacting one to two people a day, you could speed it up where you could contact a thousand people. A thousand people a day you could connect with. That you could connect with them, they could connect with you, and maybe you're only going to get 10%, that's a hundred. Now here's what I know, even if you aren't really good at this, if somebody's doing one to two a day and you're doing the hundred a day, even if you suck at it, you will beat them. Why? The numbers. The numbers don't lie. Um, people lie, the numbers don't. So online, you're able to contact, invite. If I go from this thousand people a day to a hundred people, and then I take that hundred people and I invite them to look at something via online, I can do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can do that for my kitchen table. I can do that in my underwear. Um, I can do that wearing nothing. I wouldn't suggest that because, you know, I don't know what your personal habits are, but that'd be weird. Don't want to sit at your house. But, you know, online, I can invite 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if I'm inviting 100 people to look at what I do and you're trying to call two people back, guess who's going to win? Online. Then the presentation. Well, obviously, I could present online through Skype, Google Hangout, Zoom. Um, I can present through FaceTime. 
I could present through a video. That would be cool, right? I could just record a video and send it out to everybody and everybody could watch it, just kind of like what's going on now. People are like, well, how did you get in front of so many people? Well, you send that video out in front of 10,000 people. If 10,000 people, you know, log on and maybe watch the first five minutes and only 1,000 of them watch the whole thing and 100 of them decide, hey, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go look up what this person's doing and 100 people a day go look up what's going on. I don't care how good you are at the presentation. You need to know how to present either way. Because the same presentation you're going to have to learn here, you're going to have to learn here. But the difference is, is it works 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And it's you present it. Again, you need to do the presentation if you're the one contacting and doing everything. Then, the follow-up. Here's what I know. Here's the problem that most people get into. If you get good at this, this side, and this is the side that basically is you doing all the work instead of using online and you know some of the software that's out there or some of the social media ways to do it. You follow up with people. You physically can only follow up with so many people. You can only call so many people. There's only so much time. You know, people are like, well, if you're out trying to contact two people a day and you're trying to set up appointments, you're on the phone there and you're trying to do presentations. You know, the old, the 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 older way or the 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 pre-online way, that's going to take a lot of time. So how much time are you really going to have to follow up with all these people? You're probably not going to have enough time. You're probably going to forget. You're probably not going to have a database. You're not going to have them written down anywhere. If you do write them down, you're going to write them on a notebook. You're going to write them on the back of a McDonald's wrapper. You know, who knows? You probably will forget. Um, it'll get thrown away. You put them on a business card. You know, I, I have a thousand cards at home. It just says Bob and a phone number. Who the hell is, I don't even know who that is. I threw the card away. Follow up. Imagine having them enter through a system where you have all their emails or they happen to all be in one of your social media contacts where you can send one message and say get on this call and for the rest of your business you're collecting this information and your database goes, you know, let's say 100 people a month, so that means 1200 people a year. I'm sorry, 100 people a day. That's 3,000 people a month. That's 36,000 people a year. So take that times five years. Zero, 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 three, five, fifteen, sixteen. That's 180,000 contacts. I don't care how good you think you are or how good you think the people if you have two people on your team figuring this out and two people have 180,000 contacts at the end of five years in a database that they keep marketing to, this team wins with two people. This team will get its ass kicked even if they have 2,000 people trying to do that. It's just, it's evident online. You can see the numbers work. And then last, you've got the event. Well, this is cool. If I'm doing a live event and I've got to bring everybody to a live event that's live, I can only get so many people in the room and geographically there's only so many people can drive. But if you go online, now you can contact people everywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and people can actually come in to some of these live events, whether it be a call, whether it be something online, and you're actually able to go through kind of the same process if you have somebody good who knows how to present who knows how to get the information to them, who hits every